Hello, everyone. My name is Kayvon Kamali. I'm a member of the Galaxy team at Penn State University. Uh, I'm going to be presenting uh, Galaxy ML. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, Galaxy ML, an accessible, reproducible, and scalable machine learning toolkit for biomedicine. Uh, this is a work uh, done by uh, member of the members of the Galaxy team at the Oregon Health and Sciences University and University of Freiburg. I'm a newer member of the Galaxy team. I'm going to I'm working on some extensions to this work uh, regarding the market basket analysis and deep learning. So this is the overview of the talk. I'm going to be talking about machine learning in biomedicine, the Galaxy ML toolkit, some use cases, and results and summary in future work. So ML or is essential uh, to make sense of high dimensional data sets. And we have many of those in biomedicine, genomics, proteomics, and imaging. There are two types roughly of uh, machine learning uh, algorithms, a supervised and unsupervised. Uh, supervised ML is when data is labeled and unsupervised when data sets are not labeled. So in supervised machine learning, we're going to use uh, the label data set uh, to build a model for prediction. If the labels have a continuous value, it's a regression problem. If it's a discrete value, uh, it's a classification uh, problem. Unsupervised ML, the data set doesn't have a label, and we're trying to find patterns in the data set. There are various techniques like clustering, association rules, and dimensionality reduction. So, there are uh, many, many applications of machine learning and biomedicine. Uh, here, uh, we list a few developing models for drug metabolism rates using brain images, genotype phenotype association, prediction of protein structures, and so on. So, using uh, machine learning in, uh, in, uh, in biomedicine is uh, challenging. Uh, there are multiple challenges. One is tool integration challenges because a successful ML application spans. Uh, biological analysis tools to ML tools. And these are all used for feature engineering, model building, and evaluation. So we have to have both of these tools accessible. Uh, also, ML tools must be uh, scalable and uh, reproducible. And uh, workflow engines, software package managers, and job schedulers are needed for uh, scalability and reproducibility. An integrated software solution is needed to address these challenges. Uh, this is to make uh, Gallic, uh, machine learning accessible to bioinformaticians with limited programming knowledge and uh, connects uh, to connect uh, machine learning tools uh, with biomedical analysis tools and a uh, scalable computational workbench. So our solution is Galaxy ML Toolkit, and it's a toolkit of machine learning tools for the Galaxy platform. Uh, the Galaxy platform is a, a user-friendly web-based computational workbench used by tens of thousands of scientists for uh, biomedical and bioinformatics data analysis, offers over nearly 8,000 tools. Um, at, uh, uh, Galaxy ML allows the Galaxy community to incorporate machine learning into their analyses, and uh, it's installed on over 80 servers worldwide, and uh, the tools have been run over 10, 12,000 times on US and EU servers. So how do we address uh, accessibility? Uh, you know, Galaxy's uh, web-based user interface basically allows, allows anyone to use complex analysis tools and workflows without detailed knowledge of workflows, software dependency, and, or job schedulers. Those are all abstracted away and people with, uh, with uh, limited uh, you know, programming experience can use these uh, tools and these functionalities. Um, Galaxy enables iterative development of machine learning because you know, feature engineering, feature selection, hyperparameter tuning uh, is uh, uh, iterative in nature. Uh, this is a uh, overview of uh, Galaxy ML. Uh, figure A, we have uh, the, the, the number one box is how we define a learner. Uh, number two box represents the input. Then we train and evaluate a learner and visualize the performance. Uh, image B shows a um, 
ensemble method uh, tool on Galaxy. That's the user interface. You just select a bunch of uh, values from dropdowns, very simple. And uh, figure C is a workflow, which is a sequence of actions you do in your analysis. This is obviously a very simple one, but everything uh, that the tool versions, parameters, et cetera, they're all stored. And this makes reproducing the results very easy. Uh, scalability, large uh, machine learning analyses uh, require building thousands of models. And uh, we can use uh, Galaxy's workflows to execute uh, large scale analyses. And uh, the, this uh, workflow system distributes jobs across compute clusters to be run in parallel. Uh, as for reproduce reproducibility, you know, all the parameters, tool versions, and workflow versions are uh, safe in a workflow. And uh, this allows uh, the research to be, the, the results to be reproduced easily. Uh, there's some effort to uh, uh, allow reproducibility outside of Galaxy. That's to, by making uh, Galaxy workflows compatible with common workflow language. This is a work in progress. So Galaxy ML implementation, there are Libraries for pre-processing, modeling, ensembling, and evaluation. Scikit-learn is a very popular uh, Python library for machine learning. Scikit-rebate is for feature selection. Imbalanced learn is for when uh, our data sets are imbalanced and we need sampling techniques to um, come up with new data sets. Uh, XGBoost and LightGBM are uh, extreme gradient boost and gradient boosting libraries. MLExpand is for uh, meta-ensembles or stacking, as it's called and also for association rules. And Keras is a very powerful deep learning library on top of uh, TensorFlow, which is a Google library. Keras has a very nice API, very easy to use. So there are multiple use cases. Uh, first one is Penn Machine Learning Benchmark. It's 276 data sets, 164 classification with a binary or multi-class and 112 regression data sets. There was a previous analysis that compared uh, various uh, classification and regression models. Uh, what we did was we created 15 models for classification, 14 for regression, and we used uh, hyperparameter optimization uh, for a total of uh, 4,028 models. So that's basically we specify a range for a parameter and try different values in that range, and we find which, mod which value results in the best model. Uh, evaluation was done by uh, using tenfold cross-validation. And for classification problems, we use F1 score, which is a harmonic mean of precision and recall. And for regression, we use R squared, which is a standard way of uh, assessing the regressors. So this is the result, as you can see on the left-hand side. Um, you know, you can compare various techniques. What this means, for example, the way to interpret this is if you look here, XGBoost is on the wins uh, row. You can compare it with the losses column. For example, XGBoost uh, is better 38% of the time compared to gradient tree boosting. And also gradient tree boosting is uh, better 11% of the time compared to uh, XGBoost. So if you add these two numbers up, that's 49, 50% of the time, they both uh, perform the same on the data set. And on the right-hand side is the improvement that we see by hyperparameter change. This is the same thing for uh, regression, basically the image on top left, bottom right. This, is, this has the runtime, so certain methods for, for example, extra trees, they yield the same uh, R score, but they take much longer, so they should be avoided. So results that we got agrees with uh, results in the original study that shows that the Galaxy ML can be used to uh, solve uh, you know, real world uh, machine learning problems. Second use case is predicting drug response. Uh, we used uh, meta ensembles to uh, predict uh, drug response in cancer cell lines. That's called, this is a technique called uh, stacking. Uh, so cancer cell line, uh, gene, cell lines gene expression and drug response data set uh, came from cancer dependency map project, 50,000 gene expression values over 1,000 cancer cell lines, so very high number of dimension, very limited number of samples. There are 256 drugs. Um, so uh, we also, uh, the, the, this is a regression problem, but we binarized the data, so we also, we could also use 
classification, classification techniques. We used eight regression, 11 classification techniques. Some of them use principal component analysis for uh, reducing the dimensionality of the data. And we obviously did uh, uh, hyperparameter tuning. And this is a result, you know, the, the, this figure can be interpreted the same way. Uh, stacking regressor with search CV is better at 50% of the time compared to uh, uh, linear based extra gradient boosting and so on. So that's uh, one of them is for classification, the other one is for regression models. Again, this is very comparable to. Uh, uh, I don't think this was uh, based on our previous work. So this gives satisfactory results. Uh, so the third use case is DNA sequence analysis. This was uh, a, uh, we basically re-implemented, reproduced uh, two deep learning models that were implemented in Selene, which is a deep learning library for biological uh, sequence data. Um, the first one, we trained an existing deep learning architecture called DeepC. It has three convolutional layers, two colon layers, one fully connected layer, and one sigmoid output layer. That's a convolutional neural network. And the second one, we compared the performance of deep C, deep C with an extended architecture that includes three additional convolutional layers. So um, this is the uh, uh, comparison of the uh, first and second uh, analysis between Galaxy ML and Selene. As you can see, the accuracy and area under the curve, uh, they're very comparable. Uh, there's a fourth use case that's perfect, currently under, uh, under development, if you will. Uh, we're using market basket analysis. Market basket analysis is a technique for finding correlation between different entities according to their co-occurrence in a data set. And this can uh, uncover, extract useful trends in the data set. It's a two-step process. First, we find frequent item sets in a data set. We define what frequent means based on the support parameter. Then we generate some association rules that satisfy some criteria like confidence, lift, and conviction. So confidence is basically conditional probability. Lift is a uh, joint probability divided by individual probabilities. And conviction is a metric that uh, uh, has a direction. It's not symmetric. So we're using uh, market basket analysis offered by uh, ML Extend library. Their algorithms are AP, a priori and FB growth. Uh, we're applying market basket analysis to variations in HIV V3 loop region. And uh, the goal is to generate rules that detect association uh, between uh, positions uh, among the samples. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, present this soon, uh, the results. There are other uh, unsupervised machine learning techniques. Uh, so Galaxy ML supports various clustering and dimensionality reduction uh, uh, methods. Uh, K-means clustering, or clustering, density-based clustering, and principal component analysis, as we discussed, for dimensionality reduction. Uh, also, Galaxy supports various uh, deep learning architectures via the Keras library, uh, which is a very uh, uh, easy library to use. Um, we've uh, written tutorials on feedforward neural networks, recurrent neural networks, and convolutional neural networks um, to uh, basically uh, allow um, any uh, users of Galaxy ML to be to learn to, to learn how to use uh, deep learning uh, in Galaxy. And the convolutional neural networks are usually used for image and video processing. Uh, recurrent neural networks usually are used for sequential data, whether it's uh, time-based or order-based. And uh, feed-forward neural networks are used for uh, more traditional classification regression problems. So results in summary, uh, use cases showed that ML tools are general and powerful enough to support realistic use cases. Uh, Galaxy ML uh, analyses are reproducible workflows, which store all the parameters, uh, tool versions, all the steps, allow us to reproduce results. Galaxy ML is accessible if you go, it, has, it provides a web based UI, and people without uh, programming knowledge can do complex analyses. And uh, Galaxy ML is scalable. We have a job scheduler that distributes jobs across one or more compute clusters, allowing them to run in parallel. Even some of them can run on GPUs. So that's great. And Galaxy ML is extensible. Uh, I think uh, you can add extra libraries to Galaxy ML, and then it becomes uh, available to the whole community, and not only yourself, to the whole community to use. And all the features of Galaxy 
uh, like workflows, uh, scalability, extensibility, reproducibility, they're all uh, there as well. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions.